you to tell me how to do this because I've never done this before. Never done this before. Nope. <laughs> Not on this particular engine anyway. This is pretty simple for this car. Remove your strut bar. Give yourself clearance by taking out the air boxes for the cabin filters. You remove these covers on both sides. Then you gain access to plugs and coils. The hardest part is getting the connectors out of the coil while lifting up while trying to get the tab, the pole that pushes the coil connector out at the same time. So it's two-handed, kind of finicky. Sometimes having a right angle pick would help. I think we have some picks here I can but grab. For the most part, fairly simple. Plugs go in dry. They don't need any anti-seize. It's just giving yourself access and clearing your fuel lines on this side for doing cylinder eight. You'll see that when I take this box out. <laughs> it's the fly. same thing with the Subaru. There's like no room on the back corner. Yeah. It's always that. It's the worst one. Yep. There's always one car that's just terrible. First thing you need is, of course, a 10 mil, yeah. 8 mil hex. That's only if you've got a strut bar. 14 mil removes the strut bar as well. Need a wrench. Sometimes having an impact is a lot faster, a lot easier. It's a lot easier if you have a Milwaukee one too. Having swivels really helps. I mm. use the swivel extensions, but sometimes just having like the actual U-joint kind is the best. I have this one if we need to use it too. I will borrow that because yes. uh, it'll probably become a point where I'll fight with it. I grab all the extensions because you never know which one you need. I have to build my sockets into the side of the cylinder. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you were like, the V12 I had was that way. You had the feed. The socket in, then the extension, then the wrench. Mm -hmm. Get it all together and clicked into place while your arm is crammed underneath the intake. The socket gets stuck. Yes. <laughs> yes. Or you drop it, you're like, oh, I'll never see it. I'll never see it again. Yeah. It's not happening. Yeah. Um, obviously, you put the spark plugs back in with a regular wrench so you can feel how much torque you're putting on it. You're not driving it home into aluminum with this. Starting out, what I will do is I will go ahead and remove the strut bar, which should be pretty easy. We're not sponsored, but we would love to be sponsored. I would love to be sponsored by Milwaukee, honestly. <laughs> okay. Move this guy. Like Yay! That. Super easy. Next thing is, with these air boxes, if you have an E39 that is in fantastic shape, you have to pull these tabs, and these tabs will pop this. You can also remove the seal if you need to. Pop that off. Oh, sweet. And these are actually twisted into place. They've got three ears or teeth that lock into the sealed bracket on the firewall. Because I have an E39 and they're all like this, you can literally just <laughs> do that. Bye! <laughs> and there you go. So it's easier to do this, but you don't even have to if it is broke because it literally just... Now you have access to what you need to grab. Obviously, you have ABS on this side. You have another part of the firewall here is only a problem later if you're trying to get the spark plugs out. Oh, so if you have so the swivel, you're just going around. Your, right, that's where your swivels come in. And uh, let's get these zipped off. These are actually just the same kind of grommet setup that the valve cover is held on with. You got a seal, washer, and this little guy right oh. here, which is just like your valve cover. And these are actually supposed to have a sealing ring on them as well. However, you can't find them anymore. So I am one of the lucky few. <laughs> Who just kind of has to go without. <laughs> Alright. You know this whole time I thought that was plastic? No, it's magnesium. Uh, oh. <laughs> Matches the valve covers. That's crazy. There's my recently replaced beautiful Dynamic oh. Keep everything together because I'm also a little bit absent minded, as most of us are, and I'm like, oh, I just had that five minutes ago. Where did it go? <laughs> I'm Here scatterbrained, so I Here lose my stuff all the time. The coils are the same way. I'm going to use an extension, a right angle pick. Let's grab that guy first. I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to be holding the, the light, and you're going to be like, turn the light this way, son. <laughs> <laughs> so you can just use a screwdriver and pull these up. As you can see, they're really easy to do. And you have to just kind of push them out. And you will never get it to fully clear because they're all crammed up against each other. Oh. Don't have to remove any of the grounds to do this. Also BMWs, if anybody doesn't know, any BMW, you never try to crank it with any of these grounds off because it will backfeed into the PCM. BMW calls it the DME, it's the engine computer. And it'll just fry it. It will fry it. I've actually seen that happen at work. I've seen it many a time. 
try not to lose them. Little 10 millimeters. There's two of them on each coil. Now you can see what I mean by angles because it's like, well, how do I do that <laughs> and not lose it? Thankfully, the engine is not that warm because all of this would be nuclear. Yeah, it's so much better when the car is not hot. Keep the tab up, lift up on the coil, get it off of the plug. Take some force sometimes. There it is. That's the noise. And then you can get it out. Then you can get it out. Oh, okay. And then I'll just lay her right up here. That's a very interesting coil setup. It is. I've actually never seen that style of plug before. Really? Yeah. So, I haven't done many uh, spark plug changes on M cars either. So that connector is actually MS42, I believe, style. You can see those plugs on 528s, 530s, N52 TUs. That plug is also on E36 M52s. If you're ever in a pinch and you're in a parts store and they're like, well, we don't have a coil for your 2005, okay, no big deal. Look up a 540, look up a 528, uh, in like the 97, 98 area, somebody's having fun. Was that a motorcycle or a Honda? I think it was a Honda. I think that was a Honda. <laughs> to be honest, pretty sure. Didn't rev high enough. So you can actually get a coil for another car and it will work as long as your boot length is the same and the connector is the same. You don't even have to have it bolted in place. You can just shove it down in there and it can get you somewhere. Yeah, I guess if you're in a, in a pinch and if they don't have it in stock, then... Exactly. Your connectors are pretty simple. Now, somebody's obviously been in here before. Yes, it has been me once. But I didn't lose all of these. So these are actually bolted down in most cases. Are those usually 10 mils that are holding those on there? Exactly. The same ones. See, I'm even missing one here. So that's enough. That's fun. But it's holding it in place. Yeah. So I'm just going to lift this guy up a little bit. Just to give me some clearance. And then we're going to do this eight more times. Pull this guy out. Give it a little push. Okay. Get him off just enough. Now... This is why I'm holding the camera and you have two hands still. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really hard to do this one-handed. Let me push this out of the way. Pull up on it. Oof. Such a nice noise. Mm -hmm. Noise. There we go. This, too, is also magnesium. Really? Mm -hmm. You know, for some reason I thought it was all plastic, but now that I know it's magnesium, that's so much nicer. It's, yeah. <laughs> adds value to it. It does, it adds, yeah. <laughs> value in metal anyway also in flammability too when the car burns down mm, yeah we're not gonna talk about that <laughs> all right so here's a funny part so this is in my way obviously so i have to make this clear and not yank any wires when i do this because it will inevitably pop oh, oh yeah like that if you pop that and you hit the wires you're gonna Yank it. Yeah, and you don't want to yank your grounds off because, again, you will fry stuff. It looks like you've got plenty of room on this side, honestly, for the whole thing. Yeah, this one's pretty good. The trickiest part here, this is the main engine harness. And oh. It's all plastic. And it's everything is very stiff and rigid. Yeah, and it looks like it's right on the plug. It's right on the plug. So this one becomes a little complicated because of that. So the flathead again. Let's pop this guy. Okay, push him out a little bit. Now when we get this to release, I always try to get as much clearance as I can, so I'll push this bar up in here like that. And you can sometimes just, there he goes. Nice! Perfect. Now you can clear but you need to clear to get that out. Move to the next. Maybe just a touch shorter socket. So a shorter 10 mil for this side? Back on track. 30 minutes walking around looking for a socket. <laughs> it's so much crazier to think how easy it is to do jobs when you have the right tools. I honestly say 60% of the jobs I do is looking for the right tool. <laughs> Especially in here where I don't know where any of the tools are. I spend 45 minutes on the job and three and a half hours looking for tools. Make sure you don't lose your rubber seal. This is the tricky part. So the other side doesn't have fuel lines in the way that 
are 23 years old and very rigid. There we go. There it is. Kind of have to just capture it all at the same time. And this cover comes off. There we go. Nice. Same thing on this side. This is probably the reason why I never put bolts back on here, just to keep this loose. Makes it a little bit easier. It would be a little easier, yeah. Might as well just pop them all. I was going to say, for anyone who's watching at home has probably got one of these, those two are probably also missing anyway. So yeah. if you're doing it, it's probably those two uh, 10 mils are probably already gone. That's possible. In fact, I think this is an 11 mil. I don't think that even matches. <laughs> I got you, bro. <laughs> I can't find the nut. So you just grab a different one. See if this one is uh, big enough for that. If it's a 12, I can grab a. Nope, that's perfect. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. What I was going to point out, though, mm -hmm. is that those uh, two coils look a little... That is old oil and condensation that causes that. M62s and this engine obviously all seem to do that. Oh. I'm not entirely certain why. I can clean these out. I can clean, let's see, it's like a rusty almost. Yeah, it looks like kind of like rust. I can clean out the chambers around the spark plugs. Mm -hmm. And in 20,000 miles, it'll be that way again. So yeah, that's something that I guess you just sort of live with. Ow. As long as it's not wet <laughs> and full of oil. Yeah. Then it's not going to be a problem. All right, just so. bash my head into your hood. <laughs> <laughs> not the first time that's happened. Bonk. So let's move this out of the way and get this last guy out of here. So I got the nuts off of it already. You can see where the fuel lines and even this brake vacuum line is kind of a problem. Push it off. There we go. All right. Good. Ooh, this one doesn't want to give up the, the goods. The back corner is the finicky one. Yep. Oh! Yay! I see, look at that one. Oh. That's actually aluminum corrosion deposits. So that's had condensation in it. Could you put, like, a grease on the end of the boot to keep that from happening, or is that... So I have put grease, and actually I think Dynan actually put grease in here, too. There has been grease in the boot. Mm -hmm. As far as the outside's concerned, not really sure. Maybe. You could probably just lube the whole thing up. Yeah, because I'm going to say if you like lube up the bottom half, and maybe it wouldn't rust as bad. Yeah, but to be fair, I mean, if I'm going to be pulling these out every 20,000 miles, I'm going to do that. <laughs> this is an 11.1 compression engine. I don't recommend running any further than what I have on this, which is 25,000 miles on spark plugs. So really, I'm kind of overdue for my own personal preference. Mm. But uh, all right, let's get some plugs out of this thing. Long story short, you'll see on my Instagram where I had some Vanos problems. I had some solenoids go down on bank one. I went through a situation where my other car was broke because every time I have two cars, they either both work or they none of them work. Or they both don't work. They, they both don't work. <laughs> so what ends up happening is, is I end up having to drive the lesser of the two evils of which one is broke. Well, I had to drive this one to work a couple of times with the Vanos on that side not working. I essentially just unplugged it and let it run in a base map, which was horrible on the cats, and it was horrible on the plugs, and it would misfire once in a while, and I just, like, babied it mm -hmm. to work a few times until I could get the parts because the solenoids on these are not just a solenoid you can buy. You can't just get the solenoids by themselves. They're soldered to a board. You can only get them used from Dr. Banos. You can also buy the entire board brand new with all four solenoids and all the new wiring and everything, but it's $2,100 a side. Yeah. So I wasn't going to do that. So I got a new solenoid, new to me, used, that was tested by Dr. Vanos. I've got all that on my Instagram, so it can easily be seen, uh, what I did to it. It essentially wrecked bank one. So that's really the reason why I wanted to do the plugs. It just took me a month to get around to actually doing them, and I was already over mileage as it was. So here I am. So we'll probably see something on the plugs, too. <laughs> We're probably going to see some really funky stuff on bank one. So let me get those out of there. Okay, that's on there. Let's see if we can get an angle. Yeah, so this is where you have issues. Okay, broken free. Okay, that wasn't bad. Came out kind of nicely. Doesn't feel like there's too much carbon on the end of the threads. That's always nice. All right. Yeah. I was afraid of that. Ooh.
So what I'm seeing is a lot of carbon, a little bit of oil, these chunks that are breaking Yeah, off. I was going to say the chunks are bad. Yeah. You don't gap them. You don't touch them from factory even. Um, even if these get bent a little bit, you still have three other ones to run with. So you really just never touch these. And they don't look too bad as far as the distance. Let me go grab a new one. So here's a new one in relation to. Get, the light get some here. light in there. So you can really see that they don't burn away. They're not like a single electrode where the, the gap distance will change and you'll have, you know, plugs that are like this far apart when you pull them out. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to worry about that with these. So yeah, anyways, these are pretty nasty. So I'm really glad I'm doing that. Let's see what the other three look like on this bank. We kind of have to sneak it on through here. I would have never thought of that. <laughs> I would have tried to just go over the right side over here. <laughs> See, I'm kind of holding it so I don't yeah. torque on the ABS module. That had a little more carbon to break through. So this one might be worse. One of these cylinders was directly affected because of where it is in the firing order with the Vanos problem, and it was a definite misfire. So mm. it really was affecting one cylinder, and I'm not sure which one. Oh, yeah, because I was going to ask, which one do you think it's going to be? I would think it's going to be two or three, somewhere in the middle of it, because it wasn't right on the end of the cycle between one and eight. Usually if you got a cylinder one or a cylinder eight that's down, uh, it shakes the car a lot harder. Really? Especially bad in four cylinders. Yeah, those are horrible. Yeah, I'm kicking myself for doing what I did, but you know, the car still runs and it's pretty good, but this is a lot of my cold start issue. This is a lot of the, well, the oil gets really hot and I'm driving it hard. It'll start to shake a little bit. Mm. You can kind of feel like a half cylinder running as opposed to like a whole cylinder. <laughs> it's like it's got a weak spark instead of just full. It's still sparking, but not as much strength as it could be. Right. Because, I mean, your little electrodes are completely covered anyway. That's pretty wild. <laughs> well, I'm glad we finally get to do this. Yeah, me too. It's also kind of uh, I feel like terrible. everything we've done to your car over the last couple of months has always made it a billion times better. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the steering wheel cover. <laughs> the steering wheel cover and the, the shifter. The shifter, the spark plugs. Oh, what else? The bushings. The bushings. We did those those power stuff. What are they? Power? Yep. Power flex. Flex, so, yeah. So power flex, polyurethane bushings. I did the race ones that are black. I almost, did, a, I almost said power stop, but those are brakes. Those are brakes. I actually heard that uh, power stop makes incredibly good brakes because if you want to get like the floating six pots, they have like 36 different kinds of piston. Oh, wow. And then they can match it to what your ABS module is like looking for as far as like pressure. Yeah. So you can get a set of aftermarket brakes from Power Stop and your car will just think that you have the stock brakes. So what you're seeing is a tiny little bit of oil. And that's not because the valve covers are leaking. That's actually because of this convoluted design that I had to create. This cap is directly over the timing chain. There's 10W60 getting slung directly at it. And this is a problem that every E39 owner that has a 540 or an M5, they all complain about this. In fact, there's a forum somewhere where somebody had actually embossed a Toyota 2UZ. He embossed an extension for that valve cover from the Toyota V8 onto this. I was like, I'm not doing that. Bought this $28 cap off of like eBay or something. What I did was I bored it out 10 millimeter and I put this bolt in here. The bolt has actually got a bracket welded to the bottom of it with a centering pin. So I can loosen that and then it'll rotate off and then I can put it back on and I can lock it down and it pulls against the valve cover and seals. So it'll actually seal and not leak. This is the only way I could keep this thing from not leaking because every time I was above 4,000 RPMs, this thing would literally just turn into a fountain of motor oil. Mm -hmm. And it eventually kills coils because of it. Yeah, which, when you get too much oil on the bottom a, of the coil. And... Right, and there's a little bit down in there because of me either spilling it or something. But yeah, this actually worked really well. I hope that's helpful for somebody. I will take photos of this and add it later just so that you can see exactly how it's designed. It looks terrible. I'm not a welder. <laughs> so essentially, I need to add oil to it. I just break it loose about that much. Rotate and pull. And that's it. 
looks absolutely terrible. It works good though. But it works. You can see I put a crush washer in there to keep the oil from pushing out through the threads. Mm. But you can see the dowel pin that I put in there. I just drilled a little hole, put a dowel pin. It centers it so it doesn't rotate on you when you try to tighten it down. Put about right there. Tighten it to where it needs to go. It's definitely kept your engine cleaner than most other ones that I've seen that have just the stock oil cap. And here we are with my absent-mindedness. Where did I just put that wrench? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so we got one more spark plug to pull over here. Yeah, this one's very carboned up. I always feel like the back is like always the worst. I don't know if that's just yeah. because engine heat is like up against the firewall or, or what, but it seems like the back cylinders are always the worst ones. It is. I had an M70 V12, and the engine is so long, and there's two banks of them, that there is an issue that's known to happen when people run them hard. The back two cylinders will become oval-shaped because they are running like 30 or 40 degrees hotter than the rest of the engine. Well, I've seen that happen in some of the vehicles where the back two cylinders are lower compression. Ta-da! Well, it's very oily. The oil is just because of this leaking into this valley. Yeah. Well, it should run better now. When we get it done. She should run good now. I hope so. Twelve hours later. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's why I use the little quick fit drill. Yeah. Because once it's loose and it's spinning, mm -hmm. you can put it in there. Just... I might just do that. There we yeah. go. Yeah. How does that one look? Oh, that one's worse. Ooh, that is really bad. That's a lot of carbon buildup. Yuck. It's a lot of oil burning. So that's not good. Because I kind of beat up on it. Probably a lot more than I should. But it's just so hard not to. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true, hard yeah. To not keep your foot in it all the time. Well, I've always been told if you drive a car like a race car, it's going to break like a race car. Yes. So this is that rust that builds up. Ugh. It's condensation is really what it is. Those are all about the same. Yeah. So far, they all look pretty similar. Yeah. Just, that's rough. <laughs> you were like, I need to change the spark plugs on the M5. And I was like, eh, yeah. Damn. This one, you have brake lines, you got fuel lines, you have stuff in the way. <laughs> But that one was a motorcycle. <laughs> what he said. It's the song of my people. It's interesting. You can see where the carbon broke off the edges here because it was larger than the threading in the port when it came out. Ugh. So a little bit of that probably is in the cylinders right now. The last time that I did the spark plug, well, I didn't change the spark plugs on the Porsche. I actually pulled them out to do a compression test because yeah. I know cylinder four always goes first. Mm -hmm. And so it's in that same back corner. I could not get it to go back in because there was so much crap on the threads. And I had to send that thing in as hard as I could. And I was like, if I ever have to pull this spark plug back out, oh. that head's coming off. But oh. now we're replacing the engine with a 2J, so it doesn't matter. All right. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to put eight of them back in. Laser platinum. All right, so I'm going to drop this guy in there. So you really can just drop them in. I always try to drop them in slowly so they don't bend the nodes. Depends on the plug, depends on the angle, depends on what engine you're putting it in. Mm -hmm. These are pretty stout, so I don't worry about them. And of course, we are not using an impact. I have seen people do that, and uh, that's a bad day. So that feels pretty stiff, so I'm going to... There we go. So all I'm using is... I'm just using that. Oh, I was like, were you turning that sparkle with your fingers? Like, nope. how'd you get your fingers down there? Nope. So I'm going to add this. Actually, what you can do is you can just leave this in there. Make sure that it's on the spark plug. Add your extension. And you're not trying to put 1,500 foot-pounds on them. I know the six-cylinder, the torque spec was like 23 newton meters, which isn't a lot. It's like yeah. pretty much just snug. Yeah. So I just went a little more than a quarter turn. Yeah. And then I turned it a little more. Yeah. Because these have a crush washer on them, as you can see. So you do have to compress the crush washer when they're new. And then they should come out just like they did before because I put these plugs in when I first bought this car. How long ago? Two and a half years. How many miles? 25-ish. 25,000? Yeah. Yeah. That's about it. People thought that the 30,000 mile uh, spark plug interval in the Subarus, if you've got them tuned up, is mm -hmm. ridiculous because that's very <clears throat> like low miles for spark plugs. 
Yeah. But a turbocharged car that you're hammering on all the time. Yeah, turbo cars, probably sort of, depending upon the manufacturer. I can't remember if it's an N55 that's a 30,000 mile plug. Most of the cars nowadays are 100,000 miles. Yeah. And that's insane for a lot of cars, uh, especially when you see stuff like this. You can't do that to some cars. 60,000 is usually what the manufacturers say to go. I say pretty much any of your Ocano engines that are like four cylinders. Yes. That's usually. Yeah, you could do that. And it's low boost. It's not a performance car. It's basically a turbo for efficiency. You can run 100,000 miles probably. Would you want to do that effectively? Depends on the oil you're using. Depends on the gas you're using. The manufacturer is saying, well, you can do that if you're using our oil the yeah. entire time. Well, most people don't. You go to Quickie Lubes or something to that effect. You end up putting a different oil in it, and then it fouls plugs quicker, and you run cheap gas in it, and it works the same way. Being an automotive technician and a service writer and everything else I've done, probably not the best idea if you're going to go aftermarket with a lot of things. <laughs> like I put Shell in all of my cars as far as gas is concerned. I think it works the best. I had shell. to stop putting Shell in mine. Really? Yeah. I don't know why. It seemed like every time I got Shell in the uh, STI, it started misfiring on me. I had an old Toyota that ran the best on, believe it or not, Walmart gas. <laughs> it did not care about anybody else's gas, but that 98 Avalon was like, give me the cheapest Walmart gas. You <laughs> and I was fine with it because it saved me money. It may have been one of those things where when they do two maps in the ECU mm -hmm. and it sees knock and it changes to a lower profile for lower octane fuel. Yes. It may have just been tuned better on that map, so it just ran better on that. <laughs> well, you got to think, too, that car had never been updated as far as software is concerned since 1998. Mm -hmm. This would have been circa 2011, 2012, 2013. Yeah. So fuels and everything else had changed. It was probably Walmart gas was the closest thing to whatever gas was in the United States market in 98. Right. All right. Number four going in. This one's easy because it's got plenty of room. The coil is the hardest to get out on the back, but the plug is the easiest to go in and out. Yeah. Because nothing's in its way. What I'm going to do, because I have been talking and I can sometimes be absent-minded, I'm just going to double check that I actually did tighten all four of them. Mm. Because the biggest issues with working on cars is being consistent with what you are doing and remembering that you tightened all the bolts. Because those are where you have the biggest problems is when you've got somebody coming back to your shop because something fell apart on them or it's making a rattling noise after you did suspension work. Or your wheel so. fell off. My, or your wheel. <laughs> Luckily has not happened. <laughs> <laughs> but it is possible. <laughs> Actually, it has happened twice in the shop that I worked at in five years. It happened at BMW as well. All right, so now we got our plugs in. I'm just going to put them back how I took them out. I'm going to start with this one and work forward. It's the easiest to do. I'm not really going to clean them up. I'm not really going to do anything as far as putting extra grease in there. They came out just fine. They're actually still lubricated. You got two studs here, as you can see, that it has to go back onto. So you line it up with the spark plug tube, get all your wiring out of the way. So once you get it aligned on your pegs, now you have to plug it back in. Kind of hope that it all goes back together. There, see that started, now I can plunge it. I'm gonna get this ground out of the way. All right, now it's all the way down on your studs. There is a spring on the inside of these. That is the coil spring that is transferring the charge from the coil to the plug. It's a spring, so it's going to have a little bit of retention to it. Yeah, so, so you get the nuts on there to hold it down. So you kind of have to like push against it while holding the nut, while not dropping it to get it started. Unless it goes into the void. Yes. <laughs> and then you go and you get another one, or you just put one on like somebody. You put a little 11 on the other side. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> The second one on, make sure that you're not pinching any wires. Yeah. So now I can move this out of the way. All right. Instead of using an impact, I'm just going to take my wrench and a 10 mil. I'm sure if you were in a pinch, you could do this really, really fast. I did these last ones in 35 minutes because I had been in the shop for 10 and a half hours and I wanted to go home. Yeah. <laughs> All right. These really do not have to be very tight. It's not like they're going to have a resonance problem and back off the swivel because that one is being complicated. So there you go, swivel. If you've never done spark plugs on one of these before, now you know. 
Well, we were also doing this because we didn't see that there were too many videos on how to do this that were in depth. Right, then we're going to move this back out of our way. And I like to move the grounds around the studs. Over top. Over top. Oh, try to. So you see kind of how that is? Yeah. Get these out of the way. So you're going to be moving stuff around a bunch, trying to get these coils in and out. You just mainly don't want to get too much tension on them or get them caught on something or get them bolted underneath a, a nut. Yep. Main thing is don't break the grounds. Don't break the grounds. <laughs> You're going to have great problems. All right, so let's get her plugged in first. Okay, lock it in place. Find your studs. Push it down into place, and there we go. Spin the nut on without dropping it into the void. Rinse and repeat. Okay, doing the final one on the side. Like I said, it was rinse and repeat. Oh, there's the sun. <laughs> Here comes the sun. <laughs> <laughs> all right so this guy here is now all tense because everything is plugged in yeah. so it can just ride right there and it'll be happy we need the nuts put the nuts, the down. nuts. very important that you have your nuts <laughs> excuse me have you seen my nuts uh, not in 20 years <laughs> not since college <laughs> not since college <laughs> That's what your dog Baymax would be saying. <laughs> In dog years, it's, he's like 20-something years old. Where are my balls, Summer? <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. I might have stripped that one a little bit. Oh, it'll buff. It'll buff? <laughs> oh, That's yeah. The, the swivel to the, get the bottom one. Right. This is the problem. Is just clearance, really. I mean, it's with any car. You have to figure out new confounded ways of... But now I'm kind of excited to show you the Subaru. Yeah. On how to do spark plugs. Yes. <laughs> All right, so now that you've got all this back together and it's all happy and everything is plugged in and you can think that you have this plugged in, but it slips and you push this down and you think, oh, the connector's in there. No, it's not. It's actually not. So you have to make sure that that little notch right there, see these little tabs? Those mm. tabs have got to line up correctly. It'll go all the way in and then you can shove this down. Oh, and you can see too, the little tang actually pushes the notches on the side of the plug in. Correct. Yeah. Okay. You can get in a hurry and be doing this and get distracted and come back to it. And you think you've got it all back together and you start it up and you're like, what have I done? I've ruined my car. It's, everything is horrible and awful and I hate it. Cars are pain. Yes. So if you just take your time and you just pay attention. You can also pull on these too. So if you just give them a little bit of a tug, you know that everything is right. And you can visually see it too. Because you can see that every one of those notches is where they're supposed to be okay well, sometimes you got to feed this one in a little different this one is, this side is easy but before i put it in i want to show you there is a notch that is in this oh for that seat yeah that has to go in otherwise you will fight it forever see fits right in oh sweet lines right up you can see your holes look exactly like they're supposed to now you can run your little 10 millimeters back on and you are done with this bank i got four new ones going in Look at how beautiful those are. When you have uh, Ace of Spades and you have the, what's the other card hands that you can have? What would you call having four spark plugs? And does it trump like the other, <laughs> the other hands that can be dealt? <laughs> well, considering that this would be a maintenance item that can potentially cause more expensive problems in the future, I would say this is probably like a flush. The roll of flush? Yeah. <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. Way on down in there. What is it? Oh, is it the nut that was it's missing one from of the missing nuts? <laughs> I see your royal flush of spark plugs, and I raise you one head gasket. <laughs> <laughs> one ticking vibration. Yeah. That I can't figure out for the life of me what, what it is and where it's coming from. What lifter oh, tick? <laughs> would you look at that? <laughs> There's the other one. Oh. It's in the void. Gone forever. Gone forever. It was lost originally. It never so hit the still... floor. <laughs> and nothing could go wrong. Oh no, it went wrong. <laughs> it's always the worst though when you actually need the bolt or screw or whatever and you drop it and it doesn't hit the ground and then you're looking for it for 10 minutes and you're like, yes. where did it go? Where is it? Or four hours. Yes. Land Rovers are like, it goes into the void. You can't see it from up top and you can't see it from underneath. It doesn't matter if you take under trays and stuff off. It's just, it's just gone. Yep. Add that to the parts list. <laughs> I need one T30 Torx bit. They're like, why? <laughs> don't ask. Please don't ask. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. 
soils. It's long as thermal. It's tedious, but like at least you know it's gonna go in. If you're impacting it and it's like cross threading, you won't know until it's too late. That's why you always start them first by hand. So you know that you're on the spark plug and you're not gonna strip it. You'll feel it kind of click in place. If your spark plug socket is new and correct and isn't missing the rubber center piece that uh, kind of holds onto the spark plug. What I've seen a lot is people go, I don't think my spark plug is going in. What they don't realize is that the socket never went on the end of the spark plug all the way. Yes. And they've just been turning the socket for 20 minutes. It's like, why isn't it getting tight? It's like, well, make sure that you got the right size socket. So I like to do it in this sequence just simply because you can keep track of which ones have been done, which ones haven't been done. Some people like to do one at a time and you're switching the wrench back and forth. And you take one out and you put another one in. You take one out you put another one in. You can do it that way if your mind works correctly to make that happen. Mine if, doesn't. If your mind doesn't work <laughs> like mine does not work, you will end up having a conversation or whatever you're doing and you will inevitably miss a spark plug altogether. And you're like, gee, why do I have a new one that doesn't... <laughs> they I gave, thought I did them all. Shoot, they gave me nine spark plugs. <laughs> nine no, you just weren't really paying attention. There is something cathartic about doing spark plugs. I don't know why. Because, I guess because it's not... My car is broken. I don't understand exactly what's happening. And I'm trying to fix it. And I'm throwing parts at it. Because I don't know how to diagnose it. Because I don't understand what's going on. Which is very common with newer cars. Well, the problem is there's so much misinformation on the internet on how to do it correctly. And I don't think you can ask ChatGPT. Because it doesn't really know. It'll just give you common generic answers. Yeah, it has approximate knowledge of most things. There's something just sort of therapeutic about it. You're just here doing maintenance. You're not stressing about it. wouldn't say the same maybe for like air filters, but like you're just doing an oil change. <laughs> air filter is just an air filter. But just doing an oil change sometimes is therapeutic. Can confirm cabin air filter, not therapeutic. Not therapeutic. <laughs> Folding over backwards into the passenger floorboard is never fun if it's down there. Taking half the dash apart to get it out. <laughs> And then getting paid 0.5 to do it. Yeah. All right, again, start with the back ones because they are the hardest. Obviously, we have everything in the way. Mm -hmm. Kind of feed it in like so. Remove all the garbage out of the way. See, so here's a ground that's trying to get bolted in place. So I don't want it to do that. Like I said, this one is the hardest because you got to hold this tab up. There's not a lot of play like there is in this one or that one. Feed it in. Watch it click down into place. Now we're good. Honestly, this ground would be okay as long as it doesn't get under my bolt. Okay, clicked in. Don't break the fuel lines, please. Also, these quick disconnect that BMW do, yeah, those break all the time. Yeah. So far, though, this seems a lot easier than I kind of expected for some reason. I had this stereotypical, like, oh, it's a BMW, so doing spark plugs is even going to be, like, really difficult. And it's not. This is actually really straightforward. Not as straightforward as my Mazda is, but it's, you know, <laughs> it's not bad. Well, any, like, four-cylinder, besides the Subaru platform, I feel like the spark plug change is usually, like, pretty easy. Right. Now, this is an entirely too much extension for <laughs> So, but you got the swivel on there, so that's... But I got the swivel, so we're good. Yeah. All right, put the cover back on. I'm going to set these up here and immediately forget where I put them. I got you, bro. It's on camera. Okay. We know where they are. All right. <laughs> Here's the hardest part is clearing brake lines, fuel lines, and getting that rubber seal that I was talking about on that side back on the cover. So you're going to have to just finagle. said this is the hardest one to get around everything so now I've got a oil pressure switch down here that I have to clear try not to break anything is it catching on something in the back yeah it's catching on everything <laughs> it's catching on fuel lines it's catching on brake lines sometimes you just have to take it back out and look at it again and start over pull all the spark plugs back out put them back in the box Yep. <laughs> Start from the beginning. Yep. There we go. Okay. There. Ta-da. Sometimes turning it upside down and shaking it is all you need. The screws were up there. We didn't lose them. We found the screws. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, BMW, for providing us this nice table. Yes. <laughs>
like the jokes of the old flat fender Jeep. Hold your beer and everything on the side of it. <laughs> sure. The fridge for all the b soda in here. <laughs> and even myself, who has done this more times than I can count, can even have something happen. So we'll see how she sounds when she fires up. We're going to fire it first to make sure everything works. Feel smoother because it looks smoother. Yes. Yeah. Considerably. It sounds better. Yeah. It sounded a little gurgly when you showed up. Yeah, a little bit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Now all we have to do is put the air boxes back on. If you have a code reader that can clear adaptations, highly advise that because the car has been used to running with those plugs in it. She's a little shaky at higher RPM because it's so pig rich right now because of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do adaptation clear. If you don't have a code reader, sometimes you can get away with, if it takes you an hour or two to do this job, take the battery off to do it. Just take the ground off of it and that way you also don't worry about accidentally messing something up with unplugging stuff coils shouldn't have any power from the dme as bmw calls it shouldn't have any power from that if the key is off if you have your key on they'll have power from the relay that powers the ecu so it'll be power there there'll be ground there but there's a third wire which is your closing circuit and that is the driver from the ecu so there shouldn't be any of that happening unless it's cranking because that will not work unless you've got crank position signal being sent back to it that's reading a tone ring saying the engine is at this point and it's spinning. Mm -hmm. So you really don't have to pull the battery to do this job. Unless you need it to reset. Unless you need it to reset. Yeah. And sometimes you can have it all shaky and nasty and miserable as it's trying to figure itself out too. Sometimes make it worse if you don't know that that's what it's doing. It's trying to figure itself out. It needs to know its density altitude. The computer can figure all that out, but it has to relearn all of that stuff. If you don't reset the battery, will it eventually do adaptations over time? Or is yes. it one of those things where... So how many miles does it usually take? Uh, it can take up to a week. Up to a week. If you're driving short trips. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can just go on a nice 50 mile drive and it's fine. Okay. If you just spent all this time working on this thing and you're not completely exhausted, you might actually <laughs> want to go for a drive <laughs> yeah. and that would work for that. But I highly recommend not trying to go over 4,000 RPMs and just making sure that the thing is at a normal cruising speed, interstate or back road that's 55. That's right. perfect for it. I, however, have a little scan tool, so I am going to clear my own adaptations just because it smells like gasoline just it poured out. It smells like gas. Awesome. Yeah, it was really so, rich. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do, and especially because of those guys right there. Sway bar. Sway bar. Yep. <sighs> Perfect. It's mint. <laughs> Pardon my reach around. Oh, don't mind me. <laughs> I just work here. I don't know what I'm doing. I just work here. So that's everything out of the way. Oh yeah, your air Most boxes. Most people probably don't cover putting the air boxes back in, but I'm going to do that. Because I'm going to show you what happens when they break. So this is what twists into those holes. And this one is somewhat broken. It's missing one of them. Pretty much every E39 is like this. If you ever get like a burning oil smells or engine bay smells in your cabin when you got outside air on, it's probably because this isn't sealing correctly against that. And it's just coming out of the engine going right in the right into those holes. What you do is normally you plug this in and you twist. So you have to clear all this other junk from this one. I'm going to try to get it. There it goes. Sort of. Guy in here with my horrible cabin filters, which actually aren't that bad. That looks mint. Yeah, it's fine. And then that has a tab for water drainage. Goes down in here. Kind of fits in around everything. Pull this out of the way. We got ears on the bottom here that go underneath this lip. So you kind of set this down into it. And then, and then pull those. Hey, look at that. Nice. Make sure you plug your hood switch in. Most of those are gone. <laughs> Most of these are gone. Are gone, yes. Or they don't work. It's there for aesthetic reasons, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it is for me. BMW. And then you got your little you got your seal. You got your door. This goes like so. Tab. 
goes down and then clicks into place. Nice. Make sure you get your hood seal back in. It there. looks good. See, this one actually still mostly has its ears. So I might get lucky. This can happen. It'll pull out of the seal. So you just have to undo it. Oh. And this is also the greatest thing about doing this is bringing a buddy over and just being like, hey, can you help me work on my car? Bring sure. food and beer. Yes. I mean soda. We'll <laughs> Adult beverage We'll soda. work for soda. Yes. We'll work for a cold snack. There we go. Put this in place. Put your wiring. Do a lot of finagling to make it happen. Sometimes you got to pull this out like so, so the seal is all the way in. And then it'll lock into place. There you go. I feel like Close air enough. boxes on BMWs are always finagly. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> but that's it. That's pretty much spark plugs on a BMW M5.